The origin of digital marketing can be traced back to the early days of computing. Now, from the birth of the World Wide Web to the discovery of the internet, digital marketing has gone through different phases. Yes, digital marketing today encompasses a various range of strategies and tactics from social media marketing to search engine optimization and influencer marketing. Now, these changes have been driven by technological innovation and consumer behavior. Hello, welcome to Clockwise, produced by Netizen ICT. On this sanctuary of greatness, we discuss technology, lifestyle, and career. My name is Providence Essien, and I'm your host. Today, we're having a very interesting conversation on digital marketing and social media for business, and have a very interesting guest, one who is not just a digital marketer by name, but a digital marketer that is successful in this career. You're anxious to meet this guest, I guess, but you'll meet this guest after this break. Sorry, come on, right? My guest owned a digital marketing, US-based digital marketing agency. Now, they specialize in social media consultancy, software development, and website development. Now, without further ado, with a resounding virtual round of applause, I want you to welcome the team lead of Calvi Consult, Mr. Calvi. Thank you very Welcome, much. Mr. Carville. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Uh, I think it's a dream come true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start from Calvi Consult. Okay. Now, how is it? How do you feel operating a digital marketing agency based in the US? I know that you're a US citizen, no? but you're first of all a Nigerian citizen. Yeah. <laughs> how do you feel operating a digital marketing agency from the US being a Nigerian? How is the, how is the experience like? Um, thank you very much for having me. Mm. Uh, the experience is good mm. and I'm happy to uh, also mm. uh, give back to Nigerians mm. and also um, see how I can service the Nigerian community. Mm. Most of my clients are always uh, Nigerians. Okay. Most. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we Nigerians, we love referrals. Yeah, so yeah. if I do something for you, you refer. Tell the other person, the other person, so they'll give you Niger price. Mm. They'll give you Niger price. So, oh, do you um, deal with Niger price there? No, but you know <laughs> that's just the, okay, okay, the okay. way to market. Okay, but okay. um, it's been nice. I also have a. a it, it all started here before mm. I had a branch in the US mm. and uh, doing business with both currencies is really really interesting. Mm. And um. I think uh, it's been interesting and I'm so excited to also be a part of the uh, a company, mm. an agency that contributes to Nigerians' uh, GDP. Well, that's wonderful. That's really great. Now, now, let's get straight to the point. You see, many persons actually narrow down digital marketing to mean social media. Mm. Once they hear digital marketing, yeah. uh, it's social media. Yeah. Now, I say digital marketer. Is it true that digital marketing is just about social media only? No. That's just like the little part. It's like a subset okay. of uh, so, uh, digital marketing. Mm. It's uh, it's broad. It's huge. We have okay. content marketing, mm. influencer marketing, okay. email marketing. Mm. We have SEO. Okay. We have web development, mm. and we even have uh, creating apps. You know, uh, apps as well. Okay. Inside because mm. you have people who create content for app development. Okay. Right. Mm. And as a, as a digital marketer, there are a lot of things that you have to consider. Mm. When you say I'm a digital marketer, it means that you handle at least two to three mm. services mm. of those uh, or that is inside digital marketing. Mm. So for me, uh, like you mentioned earlier in the introduction, mm. one of the things we do, mostly what people know us for, mm. is social media marketing. Okay. So um, Is that the biggest aspect of digital marketing? It's the biggest aspect because mm. of how... The companies who have social media mm. platform has been able to use that to leverage. Okay. And one of the things that you've seen, just like YouTube, I read a couple of days ago, mm. they just marked a, a hundred million uh, TV subscribers wow. and also music subscribers. Mm. 
Now that's 20 million more than what they had last year. Yes. So it's because of how these companies have been able to develop platforms mm. that people are using to leverage to market and reach people. Mm. And uh, it's interesting because, just like you said, when people say uh, digital marketing is all about social, social media, media, yes, uh, it's it's just a subset. Okay. So when you see these companies build platforms that help people to reach, and when they come, oh, I want this to a digital marketer, and you say, oh, sir. Uh, I build apps only. Mm. Like, you don't do social media? No, sir. Oh, you say I want to do my, I say, okay, so I I'm do only SEO. Manager. Okay. They're like, oh, you don't do social media? Like, mm. no. So when they ask me, I tell them, okay, what exactly do you need? Narrow it down to me. Okay. Explain what you need. So when I understand what the client wants, I'll be able to advise mm. and say, okay, this is what I think you should do. This is what I think you should do. Mm. Now, what are the challenges in digital marketing? There are so many challenges and, um, I think one of those things is be is been over the years trying to understand like uh, my company also does mm. a, a program every year mm. for students for people okay. in Nigeria. Calvi Consult. Yes, Calvi Consult. Okay. So what we do is to um, it's like an internship program. So this is it for the, everybody. Yes, it's for every everybody. Or must you have a fair knowledge about digital marketing? No, you don't have to. Okay. So what we we mostly discovered is that we say okay, come train on digital marketing. Mm. And when they come, we we'll ask them, okay, what would you like to do? And just like you said, majority of the people are like, okay, I want to learn social media. Okay. So we end up having to build our our curriculum o- o around social media marketing. Mm. And most of the time, it's usually social media management. Okay. We have a lot of students like last year cohorts. Mm. We're doing social media management. So we segmented them into different parts. Mm. Some were dealing with Instagram. Mm. Uh, some were dealing with Twitter. Okay. Now X. Mm. Some were doing Facebook and trade and the rest. Mm. And uh, it is, it's an interesting when they come on board, they're like, oh, we want to know how to make money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can make money from here. You know? But can you really make money from it? You can. How long? You, you, how long? <laughs> how long? You, you, you can actually make money. <laughs> If you're doing it right. Okay. Right? Okay. There's a difference between just saying I want to make money. Mm. And there's a difference between just doing social media. Okay. And in the process, you're like, oh, listen, I can make money from this. Right? Okay. So there are differences. It depends on what you have in mind to go. People often go with the idea to make money. That doesn't help. I, I tell people, let it be something that if somebody wakes you up in the middle of the night, you can say. Now, are you trying to say that the basis of this particular um, area should be passion? passion? Because I feel that when you're when before you actually become a, a web developer, a mm-hmm. cybersecurity expert, you just mm-hmm. need to have a little flair for sciences and the mm-hmm. rest. So, must it be passion? It must be passion because oftentimes, like what I do, um, there were days I just work for people for free. Wow. It's just a joy. It's like a kick. Were you in Nigeria? Yeah, in Nigeria and even okay. elsewhere. Okay. When I was in Nigeria, I used to consult for a lot of non-profit. Right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. So, so I just do that for free. You know, I have a kick. You know, it's like it makes me happy mm. when I come out and they're like, oh, wow. I, 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 I go on to keyhole.com and I give them the, uh, the analytics of maybe we were doing a Twitter campaign mm. or whatever, right? I give them that. You always had a passion for this thing. They are so impressed, and you yes. see the joy in yeah, these, yeah. their faces. Mm. It just gives you that kick, mm. and wow, you've done something tangible for people to appreciate, mm. right? Mm. So I feel like passion has to be number one, right? Mm. Before you look at other sectors of what 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 makes you want to do it, right? Mm. Maybe career wise, mm. or you heard that it's a lot of money in this. But there's a lot of money. There is a lot of money. It mm. depends on what you be able to do. Like I said. Uh, my sister said he wanted to start content creating. Mm. And I'm like, if you want to start, let it be something that if you're woken up in the middle of the night, you can do it, right? Mm. You don't need to put a screen in front of your paper mm. to say it and memorize, right? You can say it at the top of your, your head. Now, right? is, is is it true that digital marketing is actually tilting towards influencer marketing? Because everybody wants to become an influencer. Everybody wants to become a, so a brand to come and meet you. Mm. Is digital marketing tilting towards influencer marketing? It's a part of it's a part of digital marketing. And mm. um, influencer marketing mostly, uh, from my experience, mm. from my experience, mm. a lot of people who who go into influencer marketing mm. is, is is an accident. 
Yes. Because you might you might create a content, you might say something on social media. Mm. You think this thing will not hold water, right? Mm. And it blows out of proportion. Mm. Right? Maybe you were making a video. Yeah. And then people started reposting this video, right? Mm. Before you know, you go viral, mm. you become a, literally an influencer. Mm. Companies start start coming to you, right? Mm. Now, you're not seen as an authority. Okay. Right? Anything you say stands. Mm. Anybody, anything you recommend stands, mm. right? So the people that go into it like an accident, like I just said, right? Mm. There are some people that become a movie star mm. and they become an influencer, mm. right? People usually do not, oftentimes to be successful, you don't have to go in and say, I want to be an influencer, mm. right? Mm. First of all, who knows you, right? Yeah. What What are the things that people know you? What can you recommend? What can you say? And it hits the politics, right? Mm. What can you say? And it stands and people take your word for it, right? So it's a subtext of digital marketing. And just like you say, consumers' mm. behavior has changed over time. Yeah. Because we spend hours and hours on yes, the screens, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. So whatever we see will determine how we go into the market and what we buy. It's an impulse that kicks in. Okay. Now there's something I'm observing. Is it true that for you to actually become known or respected or followed on social media, it must be controversial? No. It's not true that because people, that's what most people are doing they just do some things that are controversial and it's start having followership it's 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 um it's broad is uh like i used to say i i stopped fooling a lot of people okay right i stopped fooling a lot of people i tilted my, uh, my algorithm to take uh, you know good videos that mm. will give me good vibes mm. because the way the uh, social media algorithm works right mm. When you follow one person, you like the post, you drop a comment, mm. or you open the post. Even if you don't drop a comment, mm. you spent about three seconds and looking that, at that post. Mm. The next post that will come will be recommended. Those are the trade that will be recommended to you. Okay. Right? They're trying to get you. Right? They're trying to understand your your consu- your behavior mm. as a consumer, right? Mm. So they're trying to see what product they can subscribe to you. Now, it oftentimes doesn't need you to be controversial right? mm. you can create content that adds what we call value mm. and value is something that people find it very hard to understand what it means mm-hmm. and it simply means value right mm. simply means creating content or doing something or saying something that will be positive for people to see and also impact people's life mm. help people in any way they can right yeah. so I, I i just don't understand when people say oh i want to go viral i want to be Mm. popular so i have to maybe be controversial leak someone's video or chat or something mm-hmm. in order to be known no you might be known but how many people are going to approach you i can give you a list of people who have been controversial but they don't get good endorsement but but does going viral viral guarantees you to become a successful influencer because i've seen persons that have done things that have gone viral but <clears throat> after some months or some weeks you don't hear of them again yes that's the point that's mm. what i'm saying mm. because if you're adding value to people mm. right uh uh you all you 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 see that your content will stand the test of time okay right uh, there's something we call in in, in social media content re- recycling mm. right every year you made a post right mm. you see you notice something in nigeria every year when uh this so 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 that print plane mm. crash yes you see that every year when that content was posted that mm. month, mm. it resurfaces online. Yes, yes, yes. Right, you, every year. Mm, mm, mm. So that's content recycling. People take it and post it as a fresh content. It's not fresh. So if you are somebody that's adding value to people's life, mm. right, when you make a post mm. and you forget, the next year people will copy that post and post it. Even if you've forgotten about it, yeah. they'll recycle it for you. Mm. And it's something that is going to help your brand, mm. or whatever you're doing. But if you make if you made a silly video of abusing people or saying something that is controversial and the next year comes who's going to post that how is that helping your digital footprints so that's something that people often need to consider when they want to be an influencer using that route okay now i want to t- talk to us about social media for business okay because i've seen that you are you're looking for opportunity to actually say that <laughs> <laughs> what is social media for business yes um uh, is is part of what i always say because i'm i'm a marketer mm. you know I'm a marketer and... and before you respond can everybody be online 
everybody doesn't have to be online. <laughs> well, can all businesses be online? Yes. All businesses have to be online. Because, like what my company does, mm. we have clients who want to be seen and known, right? But they don't have time to go on social media. Okay. So we handle social media for those kind of people. Mm. We have clients who are non-profit. They don't even want their name. They don't even want to be seen or known or heard. Okay. okay. Right? We handle social media for those kind of people, right? Okay. To your question, does any business has to be on social media? Mm. Yes. The world is global. Mm. Before I got here, or before I went to somewhere, someone I posted on social media I said, mm. I need a place for, for pizza, right? Mm. Or oh, sorry, for shawarma. Mm. People started suggesting. Yeah. They just wrote the name, shawarma. I had no idea where that was. Mm. I googled it. Mm. And I saw the place. I drove down to that place. Exactly. Right? So what if Shamawa, shawarma hut wasn't on social media? Mm. Did not have a Google page. Okay. Right? Mm. Wasn't on the map. How will I know? That's the mistake most businesses make, mm. right? So every business mm. has to be on social media. Okay. So social media for business. Yes, social media for business is um, is an interesting concept that people find it very hard to to navigate. Mm. And when when they open their businesses, they're like, oh, I don't have to be on social media. Mm. I have word of mouth. If I'm selling or the listing like uh, something that we normally use in Nigeria which is Obu mm. right mm. selling Obu you're like oh I don't want to be on social media even Gary Gary even, need no branding <laughs> yeah even, even Gary you have, you have to be on social media mm. right I was telling somebody about marketing I said listen do you understand the concept of walking on the streets mm. and there's a tap right mm. maybe where they are where they are, where they are selling water mm. you went there you say sir i want to drink you open the tap for you and you drink and then the concept of somebody who takes his money mm. goes to a store buy a bottle of water mm. and drink the same water you're drinking mm. free and branded yeah and the person sticks to that brand mm. and say me i must drink ever till i die yeah but that literally that water can be drunk somewhere else yes so branding will help you now the marketing concept behind that is that you can brand anything I use. You can market anything. Mm. It doesn't have to be small. It can be big, it can be a boo, mm. it can be Gary. Mm. You can package it very well. Mm. And once you package it very well, you've added a price tag to it. Mm. You've created an image okay. for that particular product. Mm. You've made people to understand that this is not the same thing as the other one. The next step you have to do is to look at what are the new trends mm. inside this thing? That's often things people don't talk about. To today, I haven't seen somebody telling me these are the new trends you get from Obu. No, no. I've seen the one for Gary. They believe that people, everybody just know. <laughs> they just, you know, but if somebody should come out and say, hey, yeah. this is Obu I'm selling from Oron. Yeah. This is what you get from this. This is what, tell me why people will not buy it. Mm. Me, I'll buy that one that I know what I'll get from. Right? Mm. So, that is how businesses can try to create a brand behind whatever you're selling. It doesn't have to be big. It can be something small or create something out of it. And make sure, make sure that when you're creating something out of it, there's something in marketing we call uh, acquisition and retention. Mm -hmm. Now, when you acquire these customers, mm -hmm. you need to have a strategy to retain them. Okay. Because when people come to you and buy, especially if it's a commodity that is just um one time buy yes. right let's say like um a clothes a dress mm -hmm. right you buy one tie and you know you have different colors right mm -hmm. you go and buy different colors and then you're like before i go back there maybe like five four years mm -hmm. have a retention plan yeah. to retain these customers mm -hmm. you know yeah a simple thing like follow-up email right mm -hmm. that's something that over the time I've seen that we're very consistent now. We all have all phone requires you to have a Gmail, yeah. right? Ask customers, give me your email. Somebody can change the phone number, they will not change their email. Yeah. Because it's linked to their Facebook, mm. it's linked to their social media, mm. everything, mm. right? Ask them for email. Mm. Once in a create a time, right? Shoot them an email and say, Hey, listen, we have a new set of ties, so this mm. one will fit you well, well, well. Mm. In fact, if you bring the other one, I can give you this one, you swap. Mm. There are business concepts that you can use, right? 
when I, there was a company I was working for in the US and I see the way these people are doing business. Mm. And I say, if Nigerians can mm. try this, mm. I know that one of the, one of the issues that we have as Nigerians mm. is the issue of integrity. Mm, yeah. Saying, telling the truth. Oh, okay. This thing was this. Okay. I, I didn't wear it. Mm. You take something and they ask you, did you wear this thing? <laughs> you don't go wear this. You say, I know wear. <laughs> you know, integrity is one. Mm. But if you have a strategy mm. to retain your customers, right? Like the tire, I just use an example. Mm, mm. Say, hey, I noticed that you bought five ties uh, to last the month, time. Last mm, time. Mm. Come back, bring, bring two of those ties and get these new colors. Or you can buy this and I'll give you two ties as a discount. Or mm. I will discount this for you, right? You see, those strategies will help a lot. Because their phone number, they can change phone numbers, mm. you know. Mm. But email is something that they will not change. So every business mm. ought to have a catalog of email addresses of customers yeah. and then create a time at the end of the month mm. and shoot them an email. And that's a part of digital marketing, email mm. marketing. Okay. Thank them for coming to your shop, right? Mm. And oftentimes in businesses, when you when you have a social media presence, mm. right? And you ask the person, oh, let me come to your shop. And you go to their shop. What you see on social media doesn't reflect mm. what they have at the shop. Yeah. Mm. Is it that it's not well kept, clean, mm. right? Or they have one cultured and mm. on, mm. you know, somebody, who, a customer, uh, sorry, have a, an attendant mm. who is not very cultured. Mm. And you walk in there, the person doesn't even acknowledge your presence. Or you ask a question and they walk away, you know. So y your presence on social media have to reflect on your physical presence in the store. Okay. Right? Mm. So that when people walk in, they see the social media presence mm -hmm. and the impact you're creating. Because you might you might you portion the social media job to a, a company or mm -hmm. a group of people, right? Mm -hmm. And you stay at the shop. Mm -hmm. you, you doesn't reflect what is going on. <laughs> so people have to see that when they come to your shop, you oh welcome. Yeah. Give you a bottle of water mm -hmm. you know, to drink. Even if you're buying or you're not buying, right? At least that's the business expense, mm. right? Sit them down. Oh, how can we help you? And oftentimes, one of the things I notice as well is that when you tell the when you when you tell the the, the, the person, oh, I don't like this, they are telling you, oh, mm. you, you're supposed to like it. Mm, yeah, I think it's good for you. Mm. You don't listen and if to you the press, you, they get yeah. Angry. You don't you don't listen to the customer. Mm. You don't you don't say okay, what 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 what, what how can we how can we make you. Like, like, what do you really like? Explain it to me, right? Okay, I see from your angle. But, you know, look at your skin color, right? Look at, put this thing side by side. Mm. Don't you think this will match? Mm. Okay, okay, let me see. Let me understand why you think you don't, you don't like this, right? Okay. Mm. Get to understand. The consumer is coming to your shop. He knows what he wants. Yeah. You might think people don't know what they want. Mm. They know what they mm. want. But as a marketer, you can be able to convince him mm. by not pressuring but giving solutions, right? There's something we call smart customer service. Mm. You can give a smart customer service and the person might turn out to say, mm, okay, I see what you're saying. Maybe I like it. I, went, I walked into a TV a showroom, a TV showroom, mm. right? And I, I asked a lady, what, 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 what TV is this? Mm. This is an LG TV. I'm saying, okay. That's it? He said, yes. I said, okay. I walked away. I said, mm. what, what TV is this? He said, it's the Panasonic. I said, mm. okay. I left the <laughs> shop. I went to another shop, right? Mm -hmm. I walked in. I said, what, what TV is it? It said, LG TV. It's an OLED, 4K. Da, 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 da. Started listing. The things. And then I went back to the other. I said, I said, madam, do you know why I left? He said, no. I said, I walked in and I wanted to buy this TV. But you did not list the things mm. that this TV has. Mm. Do you know what is going to make you, what is going to, what's going to make the difference between you and the other shop? Is the things you say when you see the customer this one is not your boss will not teach you mm. right yeah. they will not teach you in school but go back at the end of the day google the names of this tv read the features and specification mm. when the customer comes take them around have a conversation with them mm. don't do, don't present yeah so guy okay, you see this tv mm. this tv has this mm. you can do this you can do this it came out in this year he come in. have a simple conversation with the customer make him relax don't just say he has this he had this and this is the price no the price should come at the end 
as a marketer. Mm. Let the co- instill that thing in the in the customer that there's a reason you should buy this TV. Yeah. Right? Mm. There's a reason you should buy this TV and it's really, really good for you. No, that's very good. Mm-hmm. That's very strong. Now, when we are back from this break, we are going to dwell more on social media monetization and content curation. And also tell people how to open a Facebook page because that's a very difficult thing. See you when we are back. So one interesting thing that people need to know is that uh, it's very simple to open Facebook page, mm. but um, not just like you say, but difficult. Mm. So what you do is um, just go to your Facebook home, right? Mm. And then click on where you have the menu. Your Facebook profile. Right? Yes. Mm. And it to display where you have page memory, just mm. the settings area. Mm. Then click on page itself. When you click on page, at the very top mm. here, mm. you see crates. Mm. And you click on the crate and what you see here is just you know literally just get started mm. so what you do here is to just put in uh the name of the page let's call it um marketing so after the marketing then you can click next what does it say say the, the name okay it's too broad okay marketing prng prng just depends on the name that you want to pick mm-hmm. so uh this is very interesting part because uh when your page is being shown to people right mm. uh they're using this okay. to determine people who see so the category is really really important for you to sit down mm. and think what does my page do right mm. so this is going to be a consultancy page okay. for, for marketing you say consultancy and then you can also since we're going to share videos you can also say vid can also say uh, creator let's do a creator content yeah. creator mm. yeah digital creator right mm. that's those two are fine so you do next let's do create so it works like magic you just mm. wait a little bit and then it's going to create so one thing i want people to also know is that Creating a page can be simple, but if you follow this step, mm-hmm. it's going to help you to get the latest and the best uh, recommendation okay. on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So, um, you've created a page. What to describe your goal? You're going to describe your goal here, okay. and I also think this is a new feature for them to really, really understand mm-hmm. what your page do. Is it uh, pro- for product and services, or is it mm-hmm. to co- create content and connect with your fans? So let's say, um, it it's, be a content it's, content. yeah, it's just be a content creator. <laughs> we don't want to go mm. because you can see the subhead here mm. says uh, best for companies, non-profit and other, and we're not that. So we're just personal brands. Mm. So we'll do next. And then the next thing is just it's to ask you for your pictures. Mm. So you can go ahead and just put your picture. We're not, we're not going to do that. Mm. And then you put the cover picture here as well. Mm. And then the next you do next. And then you can also invite your friends yeah. right to like i always ask just do this first invite friends to like mm-hmm. then you see that before you finish the whole process of mm-hmm. setting up the page you have at least 12 likes on your page mm-hmm. and then you do next after you invite your friends and then as if you need uh, all these page notifications on your profile mm-hmm. marketing promotion emails mm-hmm. um i don't need marketing promotion emails but you might need mm-hmm. so let's just go ahead then you do done and as simple as that your page is created you have a page so what you have to do here is to sit down where you have edit public mm. Uh, mm. details mm. sit down edit it add more details or here you can add a cover photo mm. and down here you can describe the power of what your page mm. does right and then after that you can add address if you have address mm. 
put a phone number, put an email, mm. and then just fix it up. And then also add uh, links to your other social media accounts. If you see here, they have uh, platforms like from Facebook, or from Instagram to Spotify. So what you do is just click the Instagram and put in the name, right? Mm. And then click. Uh, hold on, let me see. I think that's not it's not a name, so they didn't allow me. So just put maybe ads. Like man, you click enter, yeah. right? Mm. And it's safe. You, you can add another one, choose the platform, you know, like that, mm. and then you fix it up. Because I've seen people have issues with yeah. adding the official media links. Yeah. And then the next thing is, um, someone called me one day and said they got stuck yeah, okay. on trying to um, switch from their page mm. to the account. Yes. Right. So easily you can hear switch it here. That's my name, mm -hmm. right? Then switch it back to my to your account. Okay. And also just a bonus for people who find it very difficult to turn the account to a professional mode. This is very simple. All you have to do is to go to your account like this and then press these three dots here on the right hand side right once you click then you see turn on professional mode right and then you just click turn on professional mode and just read the details you get paid as a creator you see our content inside you have more people to follow you and just click turn on and just give it a moment and that's it profile is turned into a professional mode okay. and now you can get monetized from here mm. and then you can also be able to have a lot of uh, people follow you rather okay. than um, add you as friend okay so i want to ask a sincere question mm -hmm. now we're told i don't know it's still a rumor or okay, not an official statement that mm -hmm. that um facebook meta will actually expand the monetization nets and get and actually uh, open for more countries to come in, especially in Nigeria. Is it true? Um, since I'm not a Facebook official, mm. and I'm also waiting for that news to be true. Mm. But up till now, there have not there have not been any official uh, release from Meta platform Meta company mm. to tell us that one of their platform Facebook will be uh, allowed for people in Nigeria to monetize. Mm. Um, but uh, we've seen some changes okay. over the years. Mm where some of the bonuses, some of the uh, features mm. that people used to have in the in other countries that are monetized, right? They're beginning to have in Nigeria. Okay. So I I think they've also seen the influx of, uh, of people coming to Nigeria to say, hey, we need you to help us to, to monetize. Mm. Let me take that again. I think uh, they've also seen the influx of people coming to to them to ask and say, you know, we're Nigerians and we want to monetize. So I think that's why they're trying to, there have been rumors. And just just like you know how rumors work, right? Mm. When there is rumor, mm. there's also something behind the it. There's a truth behind <laughs> it. So it would, it would gladden my heart because um, what I see in other countries, what my eyes have been opened as a digital marketer, to see what is going on in the in the social media space is interesting. Do you know that people hawk Facebook pages online? Uh, people sell them, monetize pages. And these are when I mean people, these are Indians, Pakistans. Mm. That's what they do. Like young, young people to sell those things. And just recently the Nigerians started doing it. And these are countries that are not even monetized. Pakistan are not even monetized. But the Indians get the Facebook monetize, flip it and sell, right? And this is helping a lot of creators in other countries who are not monetized, right? Um, it is going to open the 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 space. the space for a lot of people to come in and also get apart from being monetized, you can also uh, have other features like the bonuses. You can also do like the ads on reels, right? If you're if you're a, a business, your business running maybe you do you, you you're doing here for people right you don't have time to create long content you just video a little few seconds video and, and share right you can you can do reels I mean, imagine getting getting like a 150 dollars every month from just video you share from here right 
that's a that's a good thing for people down here in Nigeria to benefit from. So I feel if for true those things are going to come, mm -hmm. it's going to really benefit a lot of creators. And trust me, the, the space here in Nigeria is huge. The only thing is that we've not we've not been having a lot of uh, companies mm -hmm. who who who, who, pay, who who advertise with with okay. Meta, right? Mm -hmm. With Facebook. And um just just like I explained to people. Say take take for instance, right? You put a billboard for people who know Aquibum very well. You put a billboard in in Plaza, right? And you put another billboard in in a, in a Washington uh, Washington uh, Passway, right? Uh, Barracks Road. Which of the billboard will people see the most? Good. So so that's how the space is, right? You are content creator. And you're creating content for. For people mm. who are in Plaza, right? Mm. When people see, when they see that you have a lot of views, mm. right? People are going to come to your to you and say, oh, Facebook is going to come to your platform mm. to advertise. Mm. And the more advert people watch, mm. the more money they get. Mm. When you create the content and it looks like a billboard in Barash Road, mm. Facebook is not going <laughs> to advertise on your platform. Mm. So you'll not get a lot of, a lot of money. So I used to tell people, create content that adds value. Value in content can never be overemphasized. You just need to have it. When you have it, there are a lot of things that is going to happen to your content. You don't even need to shout and call people or do at highlight at followers <laughs> at you know. You don't even need to share it. Yeah. Once it has value, mm. my auntie is going to send it in our family WhatsApp group for people to watch. Mm. Right? People are going to share it all over the country. And let it be content that people who are not in your culture, mm -hmm. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. understand the language, mm -hmm. can consume. Let it be something that everybody across religious mm -hmm. lines, across uh, society, cultural lines mm -hmm. can consume, can understand, can get, right? That way somebody in Australia can sit down and watch it and use, uh, and use subtitle and transcribe it. Somebody in India can watch it and get it and understand what you're saying, right? You see that your videos will go viral beyond what you think. Mm. Yes. Now, how do you, what do you advise people to do? Because most persons have issues with understanding. Should they actually open a Facebook page or they should remain with their Facebook profile mm. and now convert it to a um, professional mood? Yes. What do you advise the content creator? Uh, for, for content creators who mm. want to uh, expand, mm. who want to the limitation to profile. There are limitations, yes. There are limitations in the sense that if you if you if you have a if you if you grow into being a company, mm. right, you cannot hand over your your Facebook page to someone else. That's your private Facebook, right? Okay. So you want to have a page so that when you have someone else in coming to work for you, right, mm. what you have to do is to invite the person to the page to okay. be um an admin okay. or you know manager. have a yeah a manager that way you still you're still there you can mm. the person can still manage without your privacy being discovered mm. right but you can't do that with your normal facebook account mm. I, I, people i used to say open a page first mm. right stop driving traffic to your own facebook account open a page create the content share it mm. right i have a facebook page for me and my wife i have a facebook page for me alone I have a Facebook page for my tech things. I have a Facebook page for my company. So I have all those things. It depends on where I want to post, right? I cannot just cross over to my own personal Facebook account and share something like that. It has to be from here to here, yeah. right? That way, the people following you, which is normally organically because of the algorithm, right? those people are going to see those things. Facebook might flag them because they want you to sponsor those posts. Okay. But the fact that people follow you, they'll see those posts and the traffic will come from there to your own account. So I will always say, open the page. What does it take to be a digital marketer? It takes a lot of training and you have Is it to... as simple as people feel it is? Because when you go to, even you go to tech, tech school, mm -hmm. you say, okay, I want to, I want to be a cyber security expert, be a data analyst. Mm -hmm. When I want to be a social media manager, be like social media, it's not hard now. Yes, it's because of how over the years people uh, people use. It's just like the word journalist, mm. right? Mm. You've seen that the word journalist doesn't hold water anymore. Mm. 
um, uh, apologies to journalists, you right? Not, because people stay on Facebook and and become journalists, yeah. right? In fact, you depend on feeds on Twitter yeah. than you know your radio, mm, right? Mm. So 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 it, it, it the world, and in fact, that's why Caviar Consult decided to start going into web development, okay. start going into app development, product mm. development. So social media slowly people are getting grabs and saying, oh yeah, I can do this. Literally, mm. you can jump into Coursera and get few courses mm. and learn about you know handling social media, mm. learn about how consumer works on social media, how mm. you can sponsor a post, mm. how you can get your post to go viral, mm. how you can create content yeah. that can magically turn your 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 product around. And it's as simple as that. And I used to encourage people just go do it. The thing is that. You also need somebody who has this experience, yeah, to you know, you. to be able to guide you and also prefer solutions to questions that you might have mm -hmm. because the one they teach you might be theoretical. theoretically and it's happening now. Mm -hmm. What what about what happened like 10 years ago on mm -hmm. Facebook, mm -hmm. right? How will you know, right? So uh, we're always there to say, okay, this was the strategy that was used before AI came into power, yeah. right? So the strategy that was used before moderation, <clears throat> right? Human moderation from Facebook came into power. This was a strategy that was used before they, they, they could not understand Ibibio. But now, Facebook literally can read anything you say, yeah. right? So, Are you afraid of AI? You feel AI would disrupt your job? No, it's, it's amazing. I use AI in everything I do. It's, it's the most amazing thing that can ever happen to human. Okay. Because it's going to help to fasten your job as a content creator, help you fasten the job as a web manager, help you fasten the job, even as as uh, someone who creates app, app developer, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Before you run into, like, uh, I had a meeting with my with my, uh, with my my workers this morning, and they said, oh, this app is giving us issues because we're building a product mm -hmm. for a customer here in Nigeria. It's a courier service app, mm -hmm. right? And he said, oh, uh, we, we, we did not get a signing email mm -hmm. and the OTP is not going through. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't give you an issue, right? Literally, you can just jump into ChatGPT and, and, and render the code to ChatGPT and it's going to show you where the blocker is, yeah. right? So that's an easy way for, for people to fast track their, their work. But I often hear people say it's going to take their job, it's going to scare Because that's the fear, the general fear, in all professions. Yes, like, okay, it's, I, because, it's, it's because job. they're not using it. If you're using it to your advantage, mm. because as a content creator, when I go into uh, a, a, a chat GPT, for example, mm. I share my idea with him or with it. Mm. I know I call him him, and my wife will say it's not human, right? <laughs> I share I share my idea with, with it, <laughs> and it it helps me to broaden the idea, and it gives me more perspective that I did not imagine, mm. right? My company also train AI. Yeah, I know this is not. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not. A, I'm not trying to disclose what what my company does, but. We train AI and it is interesting over the years how these things could not understand human, mm -hmm. right? They could not understand, they could not be more human, they could not, they could not be empathy, there, there was no empathy. Mm -hmm. But now, slowly, yeah. they're getting to, they say, oh yeah, I understand how you feel, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, if I was in your shoes, this is what I would do. Mm -hmm. I can literally go there and, and, and just, just weep for them. And they will give you a solution to your problem, how you can calm yourself, what you would say if you have that issue again. And that is the fear people are having. Mm -hmm. Because AI is actually modifying. Yeah. It's getting to a point where you can have conversation with AI. Mm -hmm. And um, you can actually be inside your house, you don't have a friend. Mm -hmm. And AI is your friend. Yeah. And like what you just said now, you said your staff are having issues and mm -hmm. you are telling them, okay, go to AI. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's actually, it will affect the number of people you are going to employ in the future? No. Because there are people in the background mm. training the AI. Okay. Yes. So we need people to train the AI. Mm. Uh, when we see that there's a problem, mm. right? Mm. We train the AI to understand that problem. Okay. Now, if people do not run into that problem, mm. we will not have the solution to give to AI to give to people next time. Mm. If you have, if they have that problem, that means a thousand other people have that problem. Yeah. And that problem is already been imputed into AI mm. with a solution, with possible, various, various possible solutions. Mm. 
to give to people who have that same problem. Mm -hmm. So these AI companies that generative AI, right? Like Microsoft, mm -hmm. they're paying billions and billions of dollars, mm -hmm. right? To people like us to help Training. impute mm -hmm. these problems and solutions into the AI for it to understand human very well, mm -hmm. for it to prefer maybe not actual the result, mm -hmm. but a close relative. They call it a 99% mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. solution to, to, to customers and to people who are using it. That's wonderful. How did you begin it, the uh, start market? Um, it's interesting because I used to be a phone repairer in Plaza. Mm -hmm. And um I used to be an influencer, so on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I when I was repairing phone in Plaza and I was like, hmm, I'm not sure I'm going to do this till I get old, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm somebody that thinks about the future a lot, mm -hmm. right? So I switched into I joined a friend of mine, uh Mr. Paul Bassi, who was a blogger. Mm -hmm. To start, we went to Plaza, pick up newspaper. Come back up, type it in his uh, laptop. Mm. And the laptop was not standing very well, so we have to have to hold it, mm. and he will be typing. If you if you bend it this way, it's the screen the screen the screen will disappear. <laughs> so you have to hold it in a particular way. Type it and then post it on a WordPress site. We didn't, couldn't buy the URL just using .wordpress.com. So and then people started watching, and people started reading. Mm. And then we have to take that that link, post it on our social media. I need to show the future picture and people will read. So the process of keep posting those links, Facebook started recommending our profiles, people and posts. So people started noticing us. Why are these people that are posting this thing? Why did they get it on Facebook? It was because it was new yeah. and it was interesting for yeah. you to see something in newspaper in the morning and the evening. Is it online? It's online. It was new. So we had had thousands of followers so when um when they during campaign they called me and said hey we love your brand and we want you to come and work for the campaign team of the governor and i went in and then i started working for the government and the process of working i was like listen this government work will not work good. i have to go i have to I have to go an idea i went and started a company and while several other people we were working with who were also influencers were working Started my company, wrote proposals on ministries, or you know, they're calling me, oh, come and handle our Facebook page, handle this, do this, do that, do that, tell us what we can do here. And that's how I got contract, and at first we were just working with me, they didn't know what was going on. And that's how Cabinet Consult was born. And then, um, yes, and then slowly, just like I told you, people started owning their, you know, their voices. People are like, I can, a commissioner would say, or anybody that you were working for, or a brand would say, I don't need you, I can own my voice, I understand this thing very well, right? Before people did not own it, they could not, they didn't know that they can go on social media and, and change something. So now people are able to understand, they can handle it, but you still need, you know, people like us to tell you how to do basic things. And um, I think it's really interesting, the concept is shifting, and every day, every day, things are moving. The, the things you think you know today might not be something you that think is, that in the future there will be no job for social media no there will always be jobs for them because um the era of no job for social media managers had would have come and uh, i don't think i don't think they will still need us because um there are people who don't have time there are people who are not equipped with the creativity to create content yeah. and craft it the way you would there are also people who uh, cannot see how many people have created social media accounts in their name, right? Do you know that somebody might look at your picture or copy your picture, create another like three accounts, use it to defraud people, right? People like us will create a, a, a platform for, to stop that, right? You can control that so that your repetition mm -hmm. and your digital footprint can stand. Okay. Now, majority of people in Africa actually. Um, I say migrating to the Western world. Mm. Now, when they get it, they become social media content creators. Mm. Does your location actually affect your profitability? It does significantly. When I moved to the US, mm. I, I was able to see things on my Facebook, on my social media, I couldn't see. Mm. You know, one of the things was being able to monetize my account. Okay. And um, 
it's interesting because I had that account down here in Nigeria when I moved down. Um, something happened a few years ago and I got a video uh, uh, and posted on my social media. Mm -hmm. It went viral. Mm -hmm. The following morning I woke up, I saw $2,000 on my, on my, on my page. Wow. I was like, is this real? I showed my wife. <laughs> she couldn't believe it. In the evening, it was 3000 the next day was 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 10,000, went up to $25,000. One video. Just one video. I thought I would not catch that money. In fact, my wife said, Are you sure they will send you, <laughs> send you this money? But the day that money dropped in my account, mm. I could not believe myself. I said, The first thing I have to do is to buy a Toyota Corolla and give in this country. <laughs> so that when I, come, I see what to do. <laughs> so yes, it's, yeah. it changes a lot. It's the reason why people do that because you get to have opportunity, you get to get it, be exposed to things that you were never exposed to. And you get to learn these things are free, right? You can walk into, uh, a, you can walk into a shop a, where they're selling like maybe a restaurant and sit down and connect to their Wi-Fi and browse and do whatever you want to do. High speed internet, right? You can leave your house and go anywhere and do whatever you want. You can create content. You can even video people on the streets without getting abused and saying, oh, stop, stop doing that. I went to buy Bolly the other side uh, a couple of years ago on the roadside. And I was videoing, the, I took content from the girl. I was videoing the process of buying Bolly, right? Because I was doing a video of um, how much you can buy with uh, $10, right, in Nigeria. And you know, people, just people passing, they're like, oh, you're videoing that girl. Are you paying her? Okada, uh, KK Riders came to hustle me. Oh, give us something. Give, I'm like, you can't see that in, 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 the, in the West. People mind their business. And even if you're reckoning, except you're not going to a private, private property, right? Or where it's restricted. Okay. Nobody will tell you anything. In fact, people will even laugh and join you in the video. So you can't, you can't have that kind of thing here. So those are, those are the things. I feel that the next time I'll be inviting you to this program, I'll invite you and your wife. Oh, okay. That would be interesting. Yeah, questions I'm going to ask the whole of you. <laughs> Let me be like that. How would you probably go? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Your final word probably go. Final word would be, um, you can start small. You don't have to wait for to be a very professional. You can start with, just like I said, little things that you know. Even if you, you sell uh, cream, like my sister does facial, uh, she sells cream for facial, uh, everything facial. So you can start with telling people how to wake up and wash their face, right? Both male and female. There's, that's a big audience. That's a big niche that a lot of people don't know. Post it on YouTube, post it on Facebook. Have three views. Don't worry about it. Keep posting, right? For example, when there was a time, there was a time many years ago, someone made a content about a pandemic with the keyword pandemic. Posted it on YouTube. Do you know that when COVID hits, mm. this guy was ranking millions of views. Shit. But during that time, he had just a few views mm. on pandemic. So it's interesting what keywords can do to you. So just keep doing it. Don't give up. All right. On that note, we'll come to the end of today's episode. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and put on the notification bell on this channel because every week we bring amazing content. And also, do not forget that the elite children of the 21st century are not those who did not go to school or those who will not go to school. But there are those who have refused to evolve as their environment is evolving. My name is Providence Essien. See you again. Bye-bye.